Hi, I'm Brian with Montana Angler, and we're out here today on the Madison River in late June, and I look around the banks, and I see a lot of these giant insects crawling around, the legendary, the iconic salmon fly. If you're lucky enough to be in the Madison River during the salmon fly emergence, you're in the game for catching some of the biggest fish in the river. Big trout are notorious for liking to eat large morsels of food, and there's few things more calorie packed than a giant salmon fly. When fishing salmon flies in the Madison, timing is everything. The hatch moves up river each day. Water temperatures need to be in the upper 50s. This occurs first on the lower river downstream of Venice Lake. We'll often find the first salmon flies hatching in and around Bear Trap Canyon in early June. Eventually, the hatch occurs on the upper river starting near Ennis as early as the third week of June or as late as the first week of July, depending on the year. If we have a big snowpack, the water stays colder longer and the hatch is delayed. If there's less snow or we have a warm spring, the hatch will accelerate and occur earlier. Once the hatch begins, the leading edge of the hatch tends to migrate upriver five, six, seven, ten miles each day. It takes about a week or so for that hatch to progress from the bottom of the Upper Madison near Ennis up to the top near Hebgen Lake. One of the tips I found to be effective when fishing the Upper Madison is to actually avoid the heart of the hatch. The reason for this is the Madison is so prolific in its stonefly habitat, there are a lot of salmon flies. When the hatch is peaking, the fish can sometimes be engorged, literally regurgitating salmon flies, and it's hard for them to eat anymore. I tend to have the most success fishing upriver above the hatch during the nymphal migration or several days after the hatch is passed when the fish still remember what the big insect looks like and you can have great dry fly fishing. Another tip when you're chasing salmon flies in the Madison River is to focus on more than just the banks. Often we'll see fishermen floating down the river, casting, hammering the bank, cast after cast after cast. And there are certainly big trout feeding along the banks. This is where the salmon flies emerge and hatch. Later in the afternoons though, these big insects are flooding around. They're falling all across the river. The Madison's a broad, shallow river. There's great trout habitat mid-river around these big rock structures. And sometimes you'll hook really large fish that have seen a lot less flies right out in the river. Make sure you don't focus exclusively on the banks. Give the whole river a shot. I love throwing dry flies in the salmon fly. Watching a big giant trout engulf a huge salmon fly is one of the most exciting aspects of our sport. I tend to go dry fly or die when we're throwing salmon flies when we see the adults. And often I'll fish two salmon flies, but I like to break them out. So to the tail end of your hook of the first salmon fly, tie some tippet. I like to go two and a half feet maybe even three feet. And what that does is allows you to cover more water. It also allows you to present two different salmon fly patterns. Sometimes when fishing two dries, I like to use one large salmon fly and then a much smaller pattern. Even though salmon flies tend to dominate the sky when they're flying because they're so large, if we look closely, we see lots of other insects, caddis, yellow sallies. And there are times when the trout prefer these smaller insects and you can pick up a few extra trout with the smaller bug in addition to the salmon fly. If you're like me and you love fishing big western rivers, there's no better place than to come to the Madison River during its most famous hatch of salmon fly, throw your hat in the ring, and see if you can catch a big one.